Well, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Uh, we're three weeks into the, the new year. And uh, how are those New Year's resolutions going? How about those things that you promised yourself you were going to gonna start doing? And uh, are you still sticking with them? Uh, I've always tried to encourage people that uh, uh, when they start the new year, make sure you start it with God's word. Um, and that's, a, that's something that we don't need to give up on too easily. Uh, this is a living word. And no matter how many times you read it, you can go back and read it again. And uh, you're going to get something new out of it. You're going to get a new perspective. You're going to get a, a, a new truth that comes out of it. And maybe even a new promise. And isn't that what we need these days when when our world seems to be in so much turmoil. Uh, I want to thank everybody and remind everybody that we're still collecting for the, for the uh, food bank and, and we'll be doing that until the very end of the month. Uh, if you go to the store, pick up an extra jar of peanut butter or maybe a little extra pasta sauce or something and, and come by and uh, we can get it on in and, and get it to them and get it to people who who really need it, and it'll be muchly appreciated. Uh, we're going to be in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, we're going to look at, at, at something that's probably very familiar to a lot of people. Maybe there's some of you that uh, haven't looked at this scripture in a, in a long time, and so we're just going to get into it and see what the Lord has for us. Starting down at the third verse, 13th chapter, book of Matthew, down at the third verse. And the Bible says, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no de deepness, deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But other fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And we pray now, Lord, that you'll give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see. And let your truth reign in us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The sower. That's you, that's me, that's us all. What Jesus was telling his disciples was that the word of God is seed. And you know something that I really like about this parable? He gives the explanation of it a little further down the line. Uh, we're going to look at it here in uh, some things that we might not have, have thought about before. It says, the sower went forth to sow. It says, and when he had sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. I have often wondered to myself, why are there some people that sit in a church service? And some people, you can tell, whatever the preacher's preaching, maybe it's a teacher, whatever the teacher's teaching, that boy, it just goes right to their heart. And it touches them so much. And then other people, they just sit there like, I don't know why I came here. Uh, I'm not sure that this is really going to be beneficial. Or maybe it doesn't apply to me. But I have to tell you that the word of God applies to everybody. Now, Jesus would tell people that, that the seed is the word of God. And that the ground represents the heart. And, and I want to tell you, these seeds that fell by the wayside, it says that the devil's just going to come and devour them up. 
Uh, Jesus said that these are people that, that don't understand. They just don't understand God's plan for salvation. And uh, you know something? I'm not sure that there aren't a whole lot more of those people out there in the world today than, than, than what we think. You can talk to people, and as you talk to them, you can understand that there are people out there that are just not going to get this. They're not interested in it. They're, they might be polite. They, they might listen to you as, as you talk. They might come to church two or three times. They might be interested enough to see what this is all about, but they just don't have any heart for it. And what makes a person have heart for something and another person doesn't? Boy, if I knew the answer to that, I would, I would bottle it. I would give it out on the street corners. I would tell everybody that this is what you have to do to receive the word of God. But I'm going to tell you, I don't know. I know and, and was talking with a brother not too long ago, and we were talking about a, a, a person who's always had a real good life. It seems like he's never had any trials and he's never had any tribulations. And, and yet, he's never accepted Jesus into his life. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that the trials and hardships, they can either make us bitter or they can make us better. And too often, I'm afraid that they make people bitter. I have you ever heard somebody say things? Well, if there's a God, why does he allow this to happen? Why is this going on over here? Why is that happening? Why is there so much suffering in the world? These things are all questions that we're never going to be able to answer this side of eternity. God doesn't reveal everything to us. But what he does reveal to us, we're to grab hold of and hang on to. The promises that he tells us, we're to... We're to grab them and claim them for ourselves. Some people, they just get bitter. When things happen, they get bitter. And they say, well, if this is what, what God's like, I don't want any part of it. Oh, what a foolish mistake they're making. And other people that have never had tribulations in their life, never had hardships, everything's going pretty good. They say to themselves, well, why do I need God? everything's going good everything seems to be right with me is is there a reason that i have to add something else to it they can't grasp it in their minds but as the prophet isaiah told us god's ways are way above our ways and his thoughts are way above our thoughts and so we might not understand it but we need to be looking for god in everything that happens to it's easy to see God in the good things. It's easy to say, oh, thank you, Lord, when we receive a blessing. Sometimes it's a little harder to, to look in those hard times that we have. If you know Jesus, it's not so hard. But if you don't know, sometimes it's hard. And the devil will use those hard things to take that seed away from you. It says also some seed fell in stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no depthness. Depth. I'm having trouble with that word this morning. Deepness of earth. They didn't have much of a depth in them. It says and when the sun was up, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. Have you ever been driving somewhere? Or maybe you've even seen this at your house. Uh, maybe you've got some pavers or maybe you've got uh, a, a, a paved driveway or something and there'll be a little tiny crack there. And, and you'll see stuff start to, to come up through it. There might be grass, there might be uh, uh, even a bush, a weed. A weed is bad to come up. And if you don't take that and get it on out of there, that, that weed will just come up but it never really gets anywhere because it's just got a very very little bit of dirt not much 
maybe we can look at it and say, well, that's just a little tiny crack. Drive across the mountain sometime and see about them little tiny cracks in the rocks and see if there's not something coming up through them too, because it does. God puts cracks there and, and, and he will put his seed into a crack. Maybe that crack was a tribulation. Maybe that crack was a, a, a crack in your life and a need in your life. And God put a seed into that and it started to grow. We're responsible for making more dirt for that seed to grow in. You say, how can we make more dirt? Well, if you were fixing a garden somewhere and you were plowing through that garden and you would come to a rock, you wouldn't plant your seed on top of that rock, but you would maybe take those rocks out and throw them to the side. That's what we're supposed to do. And how do we do that? Well, we might have enough faith and we might have enough knowledge of the Lord to be able to, to take that seed and let it start to sprout. But just like anything else, we have to go deeper. We have to get into God's word. When you first feel that seed start to sprout in you, God's gonna put it on your heart to start reading this Bible. He's gonna start to tell you, you need to find out more about me. The people that'll do that are gonna start sinking down roots deeper into a ground. They're gonna get those rocks out of the way. They're gonna get those things that that are hindering them from gaining knowledge and gaining wisdom from the Bible. They're gonna get them out of the way. We can make our ground deeper. We can give space for the roots of our faith to start to grow and to spring more. If we don't do this, what's gonna happen? Jesus said the trials and tribulations are going to come upon you. And if you haven't set down deeper roots, if you don't know that this is coming, because Paul wrote to, to Timothy, he says, anybody that tries to live a Christian life is going to suffer persecution. They're going to suffer trials. They're going to go through things. We need to take take joy because Paul also wrote to the Romans that the tribulations work with patience and patience work with knowledge and knowledge work with hope. Experience. That's what we get from our tribulations. Don't you have more faith when, when you see a, a, a situation that to you just seems hopeless and then all of a sudden, God, God does something that, that you never thought he could do, that, that you never in your wildest imagination thought was going to happen. And you know that it's coming from the hand of God. Your faith increases then. He's not forgot about me. He's, he's not turned his back on me. He's still right here, and he's still encouraging me to follow him. And that's what we need to be doing. You know, there's so many times in this world that we can just say, well, okay, it's going to be so much easier to follow the world. It's going to be so much easier to go with the flow. But we're a peculiar people and we don't go with the flow, but we follow after Jesus Christ and he walks a narrow road. There's a lot of people on that wide road but we're on that narrow road. Then there were others. And it says, Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Thorns. Jesus said that, that this was the, the uh, troubles of, of life, the, the lust 
and, and desires of life. I want to ask you something. If, if Jesus were to speak to you directly, if he were to tell you, look, I'm going to provide for all your needs, but uh, you're not going to have the best car. You're not going to live in the best neighborhood. You're not going to have a lot of power. And you're not going to have a lot of influence on people. If Jesus said to you, that was the life that I want you to live, would you be content to live it? knowing that it was coming from the Lord? If he were to say, look, I want you to follow me and not follow the world, would you be content to do that? Because he's told us that in this book. That's one of his commands for us. Follow him. Now the world's going to tell you, hey, you want to be a success? You want to have the things that the world offers? Well, you have to go after it. You've got to work. People make decisions every day of their lives. Am I going to follow Jesus or am I going to follow the world? I am so thankful for people, certain people, that work on Sundays. I am so thankful for those people in the nursing home that, that make sure those people's needs are taken care of, for, for those people that are uh, doctors and nurses in the emergency rooms, for our, our first responders, our policemen, who are our firefighters, all of them who are there whenever we need them and whenever the call goes out to them. I am so thankful for them. But then I think about the people that do jobs and, and work on a Sunday instead of taking time and worshiping the Lord that are not essential. We're going to sell gas. We're going to sell fish bait. We're going to do whatever it is that, that we do on a Sunday that takes us away from the Lord. I was talking with a family member a couple of weeks ago, and uh, a fellow pulled into his driveway, and uh, he had a, a, a chainsaw. And he said to him, uh, I'd, I said to my son, that's who it was. He said, I'd, I'd like to leave this saw and get you to, to sharpen it for me. And my son said, okay. And we, he set it down where he could get it. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll get it and get it back to you. And the man looked at me and, and he knows that I, I cut firewood and bust firewood, do it on the side of the road a lot of times. A lot of people have seen me. And uh, he said to me, uh, he said, uh, how come you're not out, out busting wood and, and getting that wood pile re replenished? And I said to him, this is, this is Sunday. This is the Lord's day. And he said to me, he said, well, I've always been told that if it's afternoon, you can go ahead and do what you want. That uh, uh, as long as you didn't work before noon, that it was going to be okay. And I thought to myself, and I said to him, you know, the Bible says it's a Sabbath day. It doesn't say it's a Sabbath half day. It, it, it doesn't say that you go to church and then all of a sudden your obligation is, is satisfied. Because let me tell you something, church is not an obligation. You can't pay Jesus Christ back for what he did for you. You cannot 
in any way give him back what he did for you. And so this is not an obligation. This is a privilege. This is something that I get to do. Come to church, worship the Lord, praise his name, because I love him. And that's got to be the motive behind everything that we do. Love. If we're not careful, if we're not loving the Lord like we ought to be, then the world is going to look awful good out there. Money will promise you everything that the Lord will. Money will say, look, if, if, if uh, you've got enough of me, no matter what happens to you, I'll take care of you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Money grows wings and flies away, doesn't it? We all know that. And you can't get enough money to buy health. You can't get enough money to buy peace. You can't get enough money to take care of you the way that God can take care of you. The world doesn't come close to his riches and glory. Final so says some seed fell on good ground. What made it good ground? Well, I think it might have started off as a stony place. But the seed fell there and they got the stones out of it. I think there might have been some seeds from thorns in there. But guess what? They did a little weeding. And they started picking these things out of their life and casting them aside. Things that God didn't want in our life. And then all of a sudden it was good ground. And it says that seed sprouted. And it bore fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. But it for fruit. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, by their fruits you shall know them. If you're a believer, if you're following Jesus Christ, you're going to bear fruit. You might be asking the preacher, what do you mean by fruit? Well, you can go to the book of Galatians and you can look and it'll tell you what fruit in a believer's life ought to look like. Think of just the first three. Love, joy, and peace. Love. How many people in this world are you looking out there and can you really say, that's a loving person? It doesn't matter whether I'm old or young, whether they're male or female, whether they're white or colored, whether they're rich or poor, he just loves or she just loves people. Wants the best for him, all people. You don't find too many loving people around anymore. You don't find too many joyous people around anymore. Knowing that, that whatever happens, they're going to be taken care of. But Jesus promises that he'll never leave us and forsake us. That he'll be there in our times of trouble, in the good times. And so we ought to be joyous. Not happy, but joyous. And you don't find too many peaceful people out there, do you? Peace comes from knowing that God is in control. And so no matter what happens, we can have peace because God's got the final say in everything. He's never taken by surprise by anything. And something that I believe in my whole heart, that he wants the best for us, not good, but the best. Sometimes we don't understand it, but we can always have peace knowing that God is in control. What kind of fruit are you bearing today? 
Do you have those first three in your life? Love, joy, and peace. They can be yours by giving your heart completely to Jesus Christ and following his ways. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Sometimes your word, Lord, it, it inspires us. Sometimes, Lord, it, it corrects us. But, Lord, whether it's urging us on or whether it's telling us that we need to change something, Lord, we look to your word as truth and something that's, that's not ever going to fail us. Lord, we pray that as we read your word, as we study your word, as we ponder your word, Lord, that you'll show us the things in our life that we need to maybe take away or maybe other things that we need to add to to help us to get closer to you. For that truly, Lord, is our desire. To you, Lord, be all grace, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.